What is good, Greg Gang? We're here today. We're going to set the giant live trap again. I actually didn't set it there for a little while. Left it unset after we took the chicken out of it. But we're actually going to keep trying to get that fox. That red fox that, you know, had been killing the chickens lately. We're either going to try to get that or a gray fox or kind of just whatever rolls in it, okay? But our main objective, our target species, is that red fox. Because we know he's still here. Where else would he have went? As I walk over to the danger tape that is still here from whenever we caught the skunk. His radiation. High radiation, had to block it off. But the bait we're gonna be using is sardines. Now we use a lot of sardines for coons and possums. Sardines actually work good for like, real gray fox especially. I've actually caught, I think, two gray fox using sardines and fish-based baits. I've not really caught any red fox on them, but eh, it's worth a try. I know they work for gray fox though. We're gonna bait it up the same way we do for a coon trap. There's also a pretty good possibility that we do catch a coon or possum. I'm just gonna pop the tab, Put it in the back of the trap and leave it. As you can see, there's a bunch of stuff in there. That was actually from whenever we set it up for the fox the first time, right over here. We put that in there so that whenever the fox tried to walk in there, he wouldn't think he's walking into a cage because the inside would be just like the forest floor. And it works really good. I mean, that's a really good tactic no matter what you're trying to trap. Coon, possum, fox, beaver. Well, probably not a beaver. But still, it works really good. So, I'm going to set you all up on the mule, slide this can of sardines in there, and then we'll put it into position. And maybe I'll try to cover it up. It'll help that much more if we try to cover it up. So, I'm going to get the sardines, crack them open there, peel it up a little bit. Not all the way, because I'll just leave the cap on there. Open up the cage. We'll toss it back there. There we go. I'm going to move it into position first. We're going to move it right over here where it was last time. Move this tarp over top of it, just to give it like a cave-like presentation. And then we'll come in here and set the trap. And there we go. We are good to go, boys. The trap is set, door is up, sardines in the back. This thing is ready to go. We'll just leave it be, guys, and we'll come back tomorrow and check it. Nothing there, come back the next day. It probably won't take too long, though. I mean, it is a pretty good trap, you know? It's in a good location, and it has good bait. There's not a ton that can go wrong. Here. Okay, guys, we're gonna be riding the motorcycle a little bit today. I have a KG Predator backpack on my back. There's something a little special in it that we're gonna use down at the pond. But anyways, we're gonna try to ride a little bit first. So, uh, well, yeah, here we go, I guess. Um, uh, I ran out of gas. <laughs> mm. I had to turn on the reserve. I don't know if I have enough. I don't think I do. I am just in trouble. Piece of junk. hitching a ride so I think we're good maybe we didn't really get very far either we'll get on the mule she never fails ever except for that one time in Nam and the other time in Japan but besides that never fail and Colombia forgot about Colombia now we're back in action 
I told me you how your trap and check hold wheel, she never fell. She can hit curves like nobody's business. She can drift. She's won, she's won three national gold cups in racing. Okay guys, we're down at the pond. Got the Predator backpack. If you want one of these, I'm gonna be using it all hunting season. I You can use it like for literally anything school. People's been using it for everything. If you want one of these or any kind of KG merch, just go on over to kindlegram1.com slash shop or the first link in the description. It really helps us out and supports us. But anyways, reaching in here, quick fix pond stuff. What this is supposed to do is clean up the water, apparently in minutes. Now, I don't know about that. It says it treats up to 8,000 gallons. And according to my calculation the pond's 24,000 gallons so i don't know i'm just going to throw a bunch of it in there i don't really think i can overdose these fish but if i do sad day i don't know if this is and that's all we got for that now i'm just going to you know ride around on the mule a little bit and the next time you'll be seeing me is whenever we go back to check that coon trap or possum you never really know in this case could even be a skunk okay guys this is actually the next day and the door is down the door is down son i think we got something it's i don't know what it'd be okay we got fur we got fur we got a big raccoon guys i don't know if y'all can see him in there just yet now y'all can start seeing him. You can hear a few flies in there. That's actually because I went squirrel hunting not too long ago. And after I skinned the squirrels, I just used the head. And I just threw the head in here to use as like extra bait. So if we end up seeing some fur in here, that's what explains that. Oh gosh, he's a big boy, ain't he? Oh, he's a big boy. We're going to name him Ricky. What you doing, Ricky? What you doing, Ricky? What you doing in here eating my squirrel and my sardines? What you doing, Ricky? What are you doing? He was asleep when we first got up here. Now I think I woke him up a little bit. Oh, you can see where he was sitting right there because he had, you know, snuggled up trying to sleep, I guess. Is that where he slept at last night? Is that where he slept at last night? Let me come over to this side. How are we doing over here? How are we doing, little buddy? How are we doing? But anyways, guys, Ricky really doesn't seem that aggressive. He's not trying to bite me through the cage. Probably because he's not really hurt at all he just walked in the cage it shut the door he don't even know what's going on he's probably been asleep the whole time but i tell you what i think i'm actually gonna do for ricky since he's a raccoon since we don't have any real reason to get rid of raccoons right now normally i would relocate a coon but i really don't have any problems with them at all i was trying to catch a fox i was still trying to get that red fox or a gray fox and uh, as y'all can see this ain't neither one of them i think i'm just gonna turn him loose right back in the world there's a squirrel tail if y'all can see that i'll just let him go let him do his thing we'll probably catch him later in the year but uh let me turn old ricky around and uh we'll go ahead and let him go here in a second Ricky, what are you doing, Ricky? Anyways, Ricky's actually being a really good raccoon right now. We'll try to get some more data, okay? He's a boy. We got that figured out. Most coons, whenever you catch them, the first thing they want to do is, you know, rip your heart out. But Ricky's a little bit different. And I think that's because the method we use to catch him. He's in a live trap. He's not hurt. I wouldn't, still not going to stick my fingers in there. But still, never, ever, ever stick your fingers around a coon. They will take them off. But we will go ahead and let him go. I'll open the door here, and hopefully he'll run straight out that way. Door's open. We're just waiting on him to go. And there he goes. Oh my gosh, Ricky, calm down! Ricky, calm down! No need to rush. I ain't chasing you. Goodness, brother. Ricky got gone quick. I'm just going to leave that trap right there. We'll, may we'll maybe come back and set it with another bait. But that's all we got for Ricky today. He gone, son. He gone. Oh, man. Ricky was a good sport. He didn't even try to hurt me. Can you believe it? No. I can't either. Well, 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 if you look who it is, looks like a random dog who does not have permission to be on this property. Hey, 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 what are you doing, Jeremiah? What are you doing? Who told you you could be here? Exactly. Nobody. No, Sheba did not give you permission. Don't even start that. What are you doing, Jeremiah? What are you doing? Hey, hey. What are you doing, Jeremiah? We did. What are you running from? I'm not going to do anything to you. Jeremiah, where are you going? Hey, I wouldn't suggest going over there. There's a little dude named Ricky, and I don't think he's the happiest right now. He just got released from prison. Figured I'd warn him, guys. I figured I'd warn him.
Okay, guys, so this week's verse of the week, it's not like a super long one, but it is a good one, I promise. It is. Isaiah 35, 4. Tell those who panic, be strong, do not fear. Look, your God comes to avenge you. With divine retribution, he comes deliver to deliver you. Now, the key words in that, as y'all may have noticed, be strong, do not fear. Fear. Now, as y'all probably know, the world out there today, it's a pretty scary place. I mean, there's a lot of meanness that goes on. I will say that. But just because it's a sketchy world out there, that doesn't mean you have to be scared and be fearful. Just like God is telling us, do not fear. God is always watching over us no matter what. Whether we're in a street, whether we're in the middle of the woods trying to kill Bucky, whether we're on a motorbike going cross country, it doesn't matter where we are. God is always with us, and because of that, there's no need to fear at all. Fear and anxiety, those two feelings, like, they don't come from God, okay? God does not produce the feeling of fear nor anxiety. God produces the feeling of joy and happiness. And therefore, if you realize that you're fearful of something, you just gotta click it in your mind say, what would Jesus do? Shoot far. He wouldn't be scared, so I ain't either. But anyways, Gur gang, just go out there and have a happy, jolly good time. Because that's what God wants you to do anyhow. And now it's time for the challenge. As you go out this week, now this is a hard one, I understand. But what I'm challenging you to do is go out for the next week and be fearless. Now I know guys, that is a hard one. And it may not happen over a week's span. It may take a long time. But one thing's for sure. If you keep that verse in mind, and always remember that God is always with you, and that He does not want you to fear. Just keep those things in mind. You'll be living fearless before you know it. But anyways guys, that's the little verse of the week. This week I'm just gonna say it one more time just because it is an important one. Isaiah 34 5. Tell those who panic. Be strong. Do not fear. Look, your God comes to avenge with divine retribution. He comes to deliver you. Keep that one in mind, Grey Gang. That's an important one. But anyways, I really don't know what else to say. If you like the verse of the week, it's a really good one. I'm just here to tell you, like, it's a good one. You need to keep it in mind. I'll see you later sometime. See ya. Hey, y'all. Y'all subscribe to Kendall Grey. Buy his merch at kendallgrey1.com slash shop. Hashtag Grey Gang. Hashtag Jesus.